You look really good. No, no, you look good. <laughs> no, you look good. <laughs> You look so good. <laughs> no, you look good. <laughs> no, you're hot. Come on. <laughs> I know. I look really good. I'm really hot. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Partners Project. I'm right now with Lisa Nova, the Queen Bee, founder of Maker Studios. <laughs> We're right now in your office. Yes, well, it's not my official <laughs> office. We have the office space that all of us are sort of sharing now because we're under construction on the other side, so we have everybody cramped into one space. There are a lot of independent content creators. Mm -hmm. You have your whole company with yeah. many YouTubers. Yes. You're a machine. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's amazing because it's been I guess about a year and a half, a little mm. over a year and a half, and the way it's grown from just sort of out of our house and just, you know, Shay and Kasim and Danny and me, you know, just a few people to this is amazing, you know, and even just a year ago, hiring, you know, a couple of editors and shooters who just became such a big part of Maker and they're here and they're growing with us and there's new editors and new talent and new channels and it's just, it's massive, you know, we have like 120 channels now. So. People don't even realize that, I don't think. Yeah, everybody only thinks of it as a station, but it's something sort of much bigger where we're all, we're all collectively helping and working with each other together to help make everybody do better. Let's go back to back in the day for you. Okay. Because you are really one of the first YouTubers. Back here. in the day, long time ago. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it, I guess this June would be five years. Danny Zappin, my boyfriend, was obsessed. He found YouTube, he's so obsessed with it. He was like, this is the future of everything. And I remember him sitting me down and being like, that's a video and these people are commenting on what she said. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of that had, hadn't really been, and I was like, wow, it's amazing. He's like, and then these people are fighting and they're talking and I was like, wow. And he's like, you should put some things on there. And I was like, okay. So I did, I put a video up and you know, and that, and that was it, sort of took off. Yeah. And we just knew we wanted to be in this space and that this was the future. And we got there so early mm -hmm. that we didn't want to fall off and be gone before all the excitement happened. We knew yeah. it was just going to get bigger and bigger. And I think it's something like only myself and Smosh, who were in the top 20 back then, mm -hmm. are still even in the top 100. Like that's how quick the turnover is. Mm -hmm. So we just spent our time, even though there was like no money there, just trying to be on there and be relevant and have fun. and stay a part of that community and that world. Five years, 2006, yeah. you're acting in LA. I did production and acting sort of simultaneously. Yeah. I did production design, we built sets, I worked for various producers for the reality TV, like the Osbournes, you know, just learning a lot about production and obviously studying acting and wound up starting my own production company and being an editor, then found YouTube and it changed everything. I mean, it changed everything we were gonna do and our entire future, our whole future became about YouTube. Yeah. If people are going to think about Lisa Nova, what would they think of? Eh, who? <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> of things to you ask. I mean, I think my channel is very unique in that I'm probably one of the only people who has never picked a format. Most people on YouTube have a format and you know what you're getting and you're going to see it every week at a certain time or you're going to see it four days a week. Mine has been a series of you know, whether it's politics sometimes or an original character or I did a web series for a month. I changed up a lot, which can alienate so many people, you know, because if you're doing politics and then all of a sudden you move to something else that's, you know, you're sort of alienating different people. And I'm just happy by doing whatever I felt like doing. I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm still on the side and still kicking. Do you remember your, your favorite characters? Because you become really great at just like playing different types of people. It's my favorite thing to do is if there's something that happens in the world and you can comment on it very quickly, yeah. that's sort of the most exciting as opposed to maybe a certain character. I can see Russia from parts of Alaska. It's a fun fact. Jersey, I love yeah. Jersey. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm obsessed with really good yeah, at well, Jersey I was, thing. This is the funny thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm from New York. Technically, my house is almost like, it's between two towns, but one town is very Jersey-ish. One town is like really kind of posh. It's yeah. like two opposite worlds. But I mostly went to the grocery store in that other town that was sort of more of a, a Jersey culture. Right. You know, I grew up just like obsessed with this culture. And like on Halloween, I was always Jersey. Like I've been doing it forever. Yeah, I just Halloween. feel like, and nobody would know what I was talking about because it's LA and they'd be like, what are you talking about? And we did a web series where I was this Jersey character that I had getting married when I auditioned for Mm -hmm. anything I'd always do this character and then all of a sudden they had this show coming out and I was so excited and I told everybody about it and 
now it's, you know, as my dad says, it's destroying our culture. So <laughs> I just still have feelings for Ronnie. So it's like really weird. Yeah, I just want to be like, stop, Ronnie, yeah. Looking back at a lot of your videos, you have yeah. a ton of them. Do you have any that really stand out as being pivotal for you? There's a few and probably the ones where it was being a part of zeitgeist and mm -hmm. pop culture. I love the Sarah, you know, just yeah. being part of the Sarah Palin, that election and, and being able to do that and being part of that discussion was exciting. And Hey America, it's me, Sarah Palin. And I'm coming to you through this contraption called cameras. I did a Hillary Clinton Sunset Boulevard. That's probably my favorite video. And how much I've missed all of you. I promise never to desert you again. That I did, and um, I think just all the ones where there was some sort of comment on what was going on in, in the world mm -hmm. at that moment. And the P. Diddy was probably the first one that was the most exciting because he had made a video and then I was making a video response to him and it was all over the news and all over the place. So it's it just fun because all of a sudden you're part of this much bigger discussion. Do you remember the first video you did? Yeah, I didn't I didn't know what to say. It was it was the most awkward thing and I was like, this is so <laughs> weird, what do I do? You know, I just I picked this French song and did some subtitles where I didn't have to speak as a song. Quand se rencontrerait le hasard est curieux. Il provoque les choses. And then, you know, I did something where I was on the bus. I just went with my camera mm -hmm. on the bus around LA. I love buses. I love everything about them. I started moving into some sketches, and yeah, I didn't think I was funny or I was a comedian or anything. I never did any comedy. So it was strange that that's sort of what it turned into. Where did it really start taking off? I, I basically started doing more sketch comedy by the third or fourth video mm -hmm. just for fun. I don't know what made me want to do it. Um, but then I got this call from Mad TV and they had asked, do you do characters? And I was like, I just thought, so. oh, of course, yeah, sure. But I, I didn't know if I could. Mm -hmm. And they said to come on in with your characters and I didn't have any. So I went and made them up and tried to, you know, do some impersonations. Is I was like, that great. Easy? No. no, I didn't, I didn't realize that that's, I was like, okay, I guess, I guess that's funny. We'll just go with that. And so then I started doing that more and more and it was really fun. And that's sort of what the space is about. I wasn't going to come up and do like my dramatic acting scene. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I think it'd be like, we need one dramatic actress on YouTube. <laughs> I know, I, I'd love to be here, but I think everybody <laughs> would just start laughing at me at this point, so. Were you nervous when all that was happening? I mean, when Mad TV approaches you and you're, you're just doing yeah. stuff on YouTube, obviously that was something you had wanted to get to. Right. You know, it was mm -hmm. a goal of yours back in the day probably yep. to be on TV. For sure, yeah. It was, yeah, I was, I was very, it was sort of overwhelming. It all happened, like I said, at once. I mean, it was literally like I, made a video and it was two weeks later. I did this video where I made fun of P. Diddy and then that was sort of all over the place. And yeah. so I got this this new, there was a feature and it got on the news. So people started calling and um, yeah, it was really overwhelming. It was crazy. You just get messages in your inbox from the heads of studios and this and that and agents and all over the place. So yeah, and I was totally overwhelmed by it. I, I get uh, weary if I don't get to be independent. So I think I was bucking against everything that was coming at me and probably didn't handle it the smartest, but I, but I, but it, you know, it, it was down. what it was, you know. I didn't want to stay on the trail of just mainstream media, mm -hmm. and that was a choice. It's a full-time job to audition and take classes. I mean, that's not, you can't just do it lightly. So am I going to audition, try and do that, or am I going to try and do it online? And at a certain point, I just made that choice. You're also an entrepreneur. I think you yes. really stand out in this yeah. space as a YouTuber because you have a huge business angle, too. Yeah, I think I think we've been able to be innovative just because you know, we got here early and we got to make a lot of mistakes and learn from them and we just had a business mind about it and we're just excited about it growing and we really are vested in YouTube doing well and all these content creators doing well and we want independent content creators to succeed and I think that's what drives me, mm -hmm. so drives all of us is that we want it to succeed and that's the business is to make sure it's not dominated by the wrong people. It's dominated by the people mm -hmm. that are going to make sure independent content creators are going to be out there and able to do it, you know? And I think that's sort of always driving us. That's the business angle. And that's why we're like, we've got to, we got to make this work. We've got to make this bigger and better and, and sacrifice and potentially sacrifice like my channel. You know, I'm like, yeah. okay, it's, it's worth not putting stuff on my channel now to help make something that's bigger and better. And then, and I'll have time to come back someday. Hopefully if you're still there. Now do people get it more? Defines. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure, yeah. I mean, yes, definitely when you're here, people understand it. Yeah. I know when you go back home, sometimes they're still like, so what are you doing exactly? And how do you make my, I don't get it. You know, and yeah, yeah. there's still a little bit of that, but it's definitely changing. It's changing a lot. I think it's it's nothing like when I started when everybody was like, absolutely not, no way. You mm -hmm. know, you, I had to make everything by myself. Um, I couldn't get people to, to be in the videos, whereas now, you know, 
everybody's like, I'll be in a video, sure. And brands are wanting to support it. Oh, yeah. And, Celebrities and will be yeah. in it. You can get like celebrity, you can get Jane Fonda to come on or random people. You know, they'll be like, I'd love to make a video. Where do you see this all going? The sky is the limit. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I see it just growing and growing and growing in so many different ways you can't even imagine. You're just gonna have to wait and see. And it's all gonna be on YouTube for you guys. I think it'll be all over the place. Yeah. It'll be lots of different things and websites and we're gonna be doing every every kind of um, you know content but we, we're gonna use online to distribute it. Well Lisa, thank yeah. you so much for having me here yes. at your headquarters. My headquarters. I feel the yeah. power. Yeah, I feel my power. <laughs> <laughs> and I really look forward to seeing what happens with Maker Studios. You're off to, I mean, a great start to say the least. And thank it's you. exciting to see what the future holds. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming so, in here. And thank you. And to all of you, of course, for watching. Stay tuned Watch for another Partners Project next week. Thumbs up and favorite and comment. Everything. Do it all. Everything. Do it all, guys. Thank you so much to Lisa Nova for talking to us. She means so much to the YouTube community. You can subscribe to her right here. Subscribe to us right here for an exclusive tour that Lisa Nova gives us of Maker Studios. Check out this video right here. See you next week.